So now we've reached the point where we need to modify the distributor. We need to stop the total amount of advance that the engine sees under boost. There's basically four ways that we can do this, which are methods where we turn around and we can either weld the counterweights so they no longer have an influence on the distributor. We can then turn around and bend the tabs, which means that we can alter how much the counterweights alter the ignition timing. Or we have another method where we can turn around and we can tap the tab, put a grub screw or a screw inside of it, and we can make it adjustable. So we can go up in increments and change how much total advance that the distributor will give the motor. There's a fourth method, and that's where we lock the distributor out completely. And by locking it out completely, it no longer has any vacuum advance and it no longer has any influence with the counterweights. The counterweights will are welded, the vacuum advance is simply not used, and then we get a programmable ignition system. We can get a system like an MSD, or we could get a CB black box, where we can program our ignition curve and how much we want to pull the timing out. So we stripped all the surplus bits and pieces that we needed to. Um, as you're taking all the bits off, just make a mental note of where they actually belong. Obviously you've got to reassemble it and sometimes it pays to take photos with your phone so that you've got a reference of what's going on. But we need to remove this plate here um, so that we can actually get in there and the counter weights will be behind this. Um, so. They've had years and years of grime and crap getting under them, so try not to force anything too hard. And eventually it will start to behave. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, they're our counterweights. Now, my preference is I like to weld them. Um... And then, once welded, I then turn around and basically run the vacuum advance. Um, the vacuum advance gives you um, better response off idle. And obviously, on cruise, it uh, gives the motor a bit more ignition timing. And then, as you come on to boost, the diaphragm for the vacuum advance doesn't see any um, vacuum anymore. So, it no longer is getting the energy or the vacuum needed to give you the advance and it starts retarding the timing down to what your preset value is. So the next thing we've got to do is pull this little retaining spring out. Which is like this. This spring's designed to stop that pin if that pin decides to drift out. Um, so it retains it from flying out and Obviously your distributor failing. Uh, we now have to find a suitable punch to knock that pin out. And once we knock the pin out, we can take this um, drive off the shaft and then hopefully remove the whole lot out of there. And then I'll show you the counterweights. Suitable punch. And just give it a firm tap and that pin will come straight out. Oh, there we go. Temptation might be to hold that a little bit different to how I've done it. Um, the tabs here that you'll see on the drive, don't hold it in the vise and put your tabs on the edge there like that and hit down. Um, I'll guarantee you end up snapping them straight off and that's just going to ruin your day very quickly. There we go. 
Now, I don't know if any of you noticed then before, but there was a little thrust washer, a pair of them. They need to go back on underneath here because they're basically, they're the ones that go behind the drive and they stop the inflow in the shaft. So they basically stop the whole shaft from moving up and down. Now, you can get new shims to take the inflow out of your distributor, but um, the tighter that you make it, you can also restrict the amount of oil that gets in under there, and you can also find that it just wears quicker because of it. So here's our um, shafts with the little counterweights, and what happens is, as this spins around, these spread out. And as they spread out, can you see how the top of the distributor is moving? Well, I've got the base here, but the top is moving. It's turning. Okay, so what happens is as the RPM increases, these counterweights come out. When they come out, the top half of the, the shaft advances. Um, when we're under boost, we don't want that advancement because that advancement can encourage detonation. And then you're going to say bye-bye to your motor. Bye-bye ring lands, bye-bye pistons, and everything else that's associated with it. So what we want to do is restrict that movement. And we can do that by simply putting a weld here and a weld here. There's a little weld there, one on the other side, and that's it. It doesn't move. Now, you can remove these springs and separate the two halves, remove those counterweights, um, put it all back together and weld it. Um, realistically, I don't see what the point of doing that is. Just quickly tack here and attack there. And later on, if you need to restore the distributor back to um, its original format, you only just need to nick it with the grinder in there and there. And um, it'll be fully functional with its mechanical advance once again. Um, now, as I said, there are many methods of doing this that other people prefer. This isn't necessarily the right method. It's the method that I use. Um, and it works quite successfully. And it doesn't actually have to um, be dedicated to a modification that's for Volkswagens. You can do this to any distributor, actually, and lock it out that way. Um, as I said before in the first video, locking out a distributor is probably the most primitive way and it's not the most ideal way of um, setting up an ignition system for boost. An ideal way would be to reach into your pocket and spend a bit of money and get yourself a fully programmable ignition system and then you can turn around and have the advantages of extra timing when there's less boost and as the boost increases it can start pulling out a few degrees per pound of boost that way and you'll find a massive um, response in drivability by having a programmable ignition as opposed to um, locking the distributor right out um, you'll find the benefits are that your um, oil temps will be lower the in, um, engine will run a lot cooler the torque will be up off idle um, and it just will respond a bit better off boost. On boost, at the end of the day, it will make absolutely no difference. Um, programmable ignition will have a predetermined value and you'll be able to lock this dizzy out at the same predetermined values. When I said before about the tabs, some of the earlier style distributors, they have a tab here, and one on the other side that basically sits at 90 degrees the counterweight which looks completely different to what I'm showing you here but essentially what happens is people bend the tabs to stop how much that this counterweight advances they then turn around and once they've bent it they reinstall it in the um, in the motor and they put a timing light on it and they pretty much what they're doing is altering the distributor to work exactly the same as a stock one but they're restricting the total amount of advance that the unit can give. Um, another way that you can do it is instead of bending the tabs, you can put a grub screw in there to stop the counterweights from advancing up, and then that way it becomes adjustable. So you can turn around and um, allow the 
whole unit to advance to a predetermined point by how much you screw it in. Um, obviously with this distributor it doesn't have these features. Just given the distributor a really basic clean um, for argument's sake just to show you guys how everything goes back together um, obviously the next thing we do is we turn around and we um, place our shim on the bottom here um, then we're going to have our drive gear that then goes on and then we put our pin and the retaining spring uh, the reason I haven't done this is as you put in the, the um, distributor together, you've got to check the end float, um, which is basically, if we take the cap off, we can see it here. The end float is how much movement we have up and down. Um, I noticed with a couple of the shims, there was excessive end float. So before I put this distributor back into service, I'm going to turn around and um, pull it all apart again and change some of the shims around to remove some of the in play it had before I turned around and made this series. So you've now got a modified distributor and if you watched my last video you've now got a modified 34 pick. Hopefully you're able to size up a nice little turbo, maybe a TD04 or a TD05 off a Subaru. They're more than capable of outflowing what a stock 1600 or 1500 needs. Um, you're going to end up with a really Fun, reliable little package that basically is quite cheap. The most expensive thing that you're going to spend out of this is probably buying a rising rate fuel regulator, getting your electric fuel pump, and on top of that, you're going to have to get yourself a decent AFR meter with an O2 sensor. Um, you just can't do this build without one. If you can't afford one, then you're better off just leaving everything until you can because you just got rocks in your head if you're going to try and tune this without knowing what your AFRs are. If this video has been helpful for you guys, if you've got any suggestions of other things that you want me to report on, um, feel free to comment. Otherwise, click and subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. If you can't afford to get programmed... What is it? The combustion process is going to happen later in the set.